any one of you who's ever had little ones who've blown bubbles in the summertime have probably gotten the old uh, why routine from the two and three and four year olds. Why are bubbles round? Why aren't they other shapes? It's a, it's a tough explanation. You can't go into all the science with a child, but it's the same reason that flames are this shape and not this shape. That whenever rain drops, hit puddles, they fan out in uh, circular waves. It's the same reason hot, fluffy pancakes. When you pour the batter into the pan, no matter whether you pour it into a square pan or a round pan or any other kind of pan, that pancake is going to end up being circular, barring some kind of form that you put in the pan. Now, what does this have to do with Antarctica? There's a misconception about Antarctica. Antarctica is cold only partially because it's the South Pole. It's cold because it's isolated at the South Pole. I've always loved to show this time lapse because it shows the winds swirling around and isolating that continent. If there were a landmass that connected Antarctica to South America in any real appreciable way. This weather pattern that you're seeing, this circular, round, swirling pattern, wouldn't be able to uh, exist. And that would allow columns of warmer air to come down through South America and hit Antarctica, and at least warm up the western edge of it. Now, I found something today on the western edge of Antarctica that I've never shown before. It's brand new, and it's pretty exciting to me, because it puts together, it's more confirmation of things that we have already shown. And I'd love to share that with you guys today. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. Now, just to give some perspective as to where we're at, Sorry, I have everything all turned on. Just I turned on everything just to make sure I hadn't been here before. And that's why you're seeing all the lines and squares and stuff. We're going to be over here at 9 o'clock, maybe just a small uh, amount north of 9 o'clock. So, of course, the Antarctic Peninsula being 12, 3, 6. Over here, the western part. Science has even said if there's going to be, if we find evidence for life, if we find evidence for civilization, this is probably going to be the first place. Because eastern Antarctica, this part over here to the right, is so much more inhospitable. I'm sure many of you have seen the articles most re recently about the melt, the record surface temperatures that have caused... There's one island where they 20% uh, of the ice melted in a day, which is insane. Now, this is the find. Now, tell me how you could have a naturally forming triangular melt pool. And I'm really kind of wondering on this, if this is even really a melt pool. I mean, it looks like what it is, because of course you have the blue, but look at the shape of this. See, up here, this kind of looks like a melt pool, but this looks like a carved opening. And let's do a real quick uh, measure on this. I haven't even done this yet, so you and I are doing this together in real time. All right. From the top to the base, 269 feet, which is 82 meters. And across here, 113 meters, or 372 feet. So, little over, almost actually exactly a football field, left to right, and um, about a third, a fourth, a fourth of a football field this way. It's very odd, this whole region right here. It is near a mountain range, and just for, I guess, Reference, uh, look for Farmer Island, Morris Island, 
And it's just in from there. How this could have formed this way, even on a ridge, I don't know how this is possible. I mean, you can look at it from this side. Whatever side you look at it from, something is off about this. There's another smaller triangle over here. And over here on the other side of this ridge, does anybody see it yet? Check this out. One, two, three, four, five. It's oblong and it's kind of hard to see, but it's there. It's five sided. There's going to be something very significant about that come out one of these days. Somebody's going to have figured it out. And as far as the uh, subglacial allegation that I've made of civilization, plant life, uh, animal life, the heat that is being um, attributed to volcanoes and volcanic activity Volcanic rock, volcanic ash, makes for some of the best soil to plant things in. And I want you to look very closely at this region, very near to it. Look at this. That's plant life. That's greenery. And it's up on a mountain. This isn't down by the sea. This is up on a mountain. There's islands nearby, but this isn't that. And look at the light that's coming through the side of this ice right here. This could be light reflection off of a forest under this ice sheet, for all we know. I mean, this isn't a little bit green. That's a lot green. And anywhere we know, of course, where there's trees growing. What do trees do? Trees produce oxygen. Trees produce a breathable environment. Something is going on and it's underneath the ice. If the Germans were successful in the 40s in bringing either 500, 1,000, 1,500 people down here, 2,000, and they found one of these regions, they would have had everything they need to completely divorce themselves from the rest of the planet. And one last thing I want to show. If you look very, very, very closely at this, and I'll give you the link to this, it's uh, sciencealert.com, um, hypnotic time lapse shows Antarctica surface winds, swirling, blah, blah, blah. You can find it that way too. It's on Twitter. I'm going to try to zoom this in and show this to you. There's something that got picked up here that not a lot of people saw. Give me one second. Well, that's about as close as that's going to get. I'm going to zoom the camera in. I'm going to go ahead and play this forward still. Look at the area that I'm circling right here. Do you see that black dot? Right there, just above the, the finger. I did some basic measurement on this and zoomed out and tried to create the same layout size-wise and what the size of that square would be. That square, that dot, was over a mile wide. Whatever that dark shadow was that they picked up very, very near the center. And it's not a, that wasn't a map overlay. That was satellite imagery. <clears throat> it's a circle a mile wide. And I'll bring up the, uh, the properties of that to show you. 1.35, sorry about that, hold on. Here we go. The properties of that line that I just showed you here, the red one. 
One second, having a uh, technical issue here. Okay, the red line is 1.35 miles long, which is 2.17 kilometers. I'm really not sure way out there in the center what that could be. But I'm going to go ahead real quick just for uh, clarity's sake and turn all that stuff off. There we go. And then come back down to where we were. So I don't know, guys. I mean, we've shown a lot of things that are very, very recognizable. This looks like something that's just evidence of where all of that other stuff came from. And given the ability to exist a society absent of influences from the rest of the planet, if they could have just focused on um, advancing science that they had discovered, who knows what 70 years could have brought. Well, look what 70 years has brought to us from World War II. If you think the images I show here are blurry, you should see the satellite images they were using in the late 80s and 90s to facilitate the Gulf War. These might as well be 8K compared to those. And they prosecuted a war very successfully on quote-unquote blurry images. Also, down here, there's all... I'm not sure what this is, but these look like windows. But like I said, I want to give you guys this... Uh, location for yourself, and you can um, look at this stuff, make your own decision. Just about every one of these Antarctica videos, I do it that way for that reason. Low tech, anyone can do it. Get a mount, get a smartphone, get a decent sized all in one computer with good resolution, and you can spend hours down here finding things that will just absolutely boggle your mind. Triangular melt pools? No way. Not buying it. So, anyway, I will leave it there. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.